priority metrics. Uh, it's before. Uh, priority priority metrics. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you see the lines is not clear. Can you see? Uh, you mean this line uh, is to inside what the then... circle part? That part that's the lines is not clear. Oh, okay, okay. I see now. The, the so you, you table. See, yeah, the the yes, the table. The lines you change to yellow, probably you will stand out. Or maybe okay, like. Or can we make it thicker? We, uh, can also. If we make it thicker, it's okay, right? As uh, long as because as your your I, the inside boxes are one one of the rows is a white color, I think. Oh, uh, okay. I see. So there's uh, the, con the contrast is not there, right? Yeah, maybe you can do a uh, light green, something like that. Ah, okay. Okay, doctor. Okay, ah, uh, just, okay. just show me a, a few slides that a lot of text that. Uh, uh, a bit, go down. Uh, ah, to... okay, okay. Okay, ah, uh, stop, stop, stop. Ah, uh, for example, ah, uh, this one, this one, like, just, just out the previous slide. Okay, uh, uh. You mean the reliability of CTES or this, this no, part? The, yeah, the description, you know, is a bit too long. You can this. cut out the to use all the the why I cannot see the full screen now. Let me see. Uh, give me just a minute. Uh. Uh, like close and reshare uh, if it's on. Uh, no, no, it's, it's okay. So, so the, the can you scroll up a little bit? Scroll up. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 up some more. Okay, a little bit. Okay, okay. Just, just like for example, if uh, some of the text like the all these things you can throw away. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So let me let me see. Uh, okay. Can you can you? I can't see the text. You see, for what was that increase accountability? Can you enlarge a bit the that? Can't see the text. You see the, the the you can see your this slide got a lot of space. Important to see text. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. You see, you put for both students and educators as they must be responsible for each other. So you, you don't have to put this. Uh, in, you have the keyword is uh, increases accountability. So the keyword here is you just need to put both students and educators enough. Okay, I see. Ah, so like uh, an uphold standard of education. Ah, so, so this is a key point. So next, okay. So ensures that this one can throw away okay ensures that educator and uh, faculties to reach their benchmarks in order to accommodate for uh for students so you can cut all this to become just uh this one is uh, uh ensures that you can throw away educators and faculties uh ensure reach uh benchmark that's it okay i see ah you understand now so the main keywords to guide the one who is going to present what to say uh, don't don't construct all the full sentences then the presenter will start reading it okay i see uh so we just cut down on the text and yes, add yes, some yes, graphics yes. right okay. yes yeah. you, and then you, you enlarge the font size make it very big so later i'm going to go through another team's uh, slide uh, the other team uh, from tutorial uh, group uh three i think team six uh, that team is excellent. I also like the design. Only some minor mistakes that I'm going to point out afterwards. Then you can have a look at theirs also. Okay. Okay. So your uh, the main mistake is this one here. It's a lot of text uh, like this, this kind of cases here where you can cut short all this. Okay. So okay, the now? same goes for ah, this. Yes. Yes. Slide like this one. You see. Uh. You it just just not that slide. Ah. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, you have the uh, direct feedback from students. Okay. That that's the keyword. Okay. So highlighting strengths and weaknesses of teaching style. You just have strengths and weaknesses enough. You, you can have mm. strengths and weaknesses of teaching style. Okay. Uh, you can throw away highlighting. Then you the, the presenter just construct the sentence. Uh, improve quality okay. of teaching. Then it's just uh, able to assess and refine teaching technique. Uh, assess and refine teaching technique. That's it. Throw away the able to. Uh, next one. Okay. Ownership towards education. Students are able to reflect and evaluate their Education, uh, student effect, ah yes, evaluate ed their education ah, like that. Throw it the oh. RA to all this control way. Then you can enlarge all the font size. So like for example, your direct feedback, uh, uh, feedback from students is your main keyword. So you have one color, then the sub the bullet one you can change to another color. Then it will stand out, and make mm. it font bigger. Okay. Okay. Ah, got it now. Ah, okay. Yeah. 
So uh, this, this one, you can see this slide, if uh, also they are lacking some uh, icons, you want to make it attractive, then you put something related to the student one. Like for example, mm. quality of teaching, then you have a lecturer teaching, you know, in front in the, like in the uh, hall like that, you know, or in the whiteboard, something like that, to illustrate the point. Then your slide will stand out and become more attractive. Uh, add, add a bit of icons. So it's quite plain, this side of a slides. Okay now? Okay. Mm. So later you'll see another team's one. Uh, the, the other one is, is I, I find that one is, is uh, excellent. The design is very good. Only some minor mistakes here and there. I will point out in the short one. Okay, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, this, this uh, one, okay. yeah, this one, okay. Uh, this, okay. This one, we need to convert into like icons and stuff, ah, right? Yes, yes. Late, later, you look at the other team's, uh, their slide design. Then you will get the idea. Hmm, okay, okay. Yeah. But the rest of the slides are yeah, okay, Yeah, these are okay, right? uh, like, like this is okay. But don't have, uh, 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 this one I don't like, uh. what is this one? Uh, uh, this one, what, what is the, the, Tada, what is that? Don't don't like like not making it like a joke or something like that. So you see this okay. one you can what is the important one is your uh, responsive metric, the R and the S. So you can see the side a lot of space. The 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 all the pink at the side one, you make it whole box, you drag it big, then it the uh, uh, font size well, yeah, you drag the the this image uh, big, then you can see. The, but the column is like very big. Uh so no, no, it, it, it it big. no this one is the image, right? You put inside the side, right? Yeah, yeah. Drag, drag sideways, sideways, sideways. Uh, but you yes. get yeah. out. Okay, so so you see, you see, you, you need to be creative. So if they say it's not enough space, what do you do? You cut into two slides. You cut image into two, two, you know, half of it, and then the other side and the second one, second part. Mm, you understand okay. now? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, so you must have the heading. I think the heading is somewhere up there, right? So both yeah. slides must have the heading up there. What's the first column, the heading? The name of the, the student. Otherwise, you do not know who, who will be the R, who will be the S, right? Yes. Uh, uh, so that the header, you, you, you put both slides, you, you cut it, you can manipulate what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see like, like, like this is better now. So if you want to make it attractive at the side, maybe one icon to show uh, some kind of task there. Okay. Uh, you see, this is a better, right? So remove the, the, the tada, that one, that one is, 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 is no use, okay? So this is presentation, you know, need to be serious, not like like uh, like a joke or something like that. Okay, right? Okay, understand? Uh, that one you can drag up uh, on the top at the beginning. Yes, one one line across at the before this table, on top of this table. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Ah, uh, uh, yes, move up. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, you see that? Okay. Hmm. So at the side, you got space, try to make use of it. If you got space, you want to put some icon, something related to responsive metric will be good, okay? Okay, so I guess I'll just split the table into uh, two yes, parts. Yes, you can, uh, and, yeah. and include all the names in the, yeah. sure um, in the both, row. Both must, uh, both have the header. Because up there, I don't know whose name, uh, the R and the S don't know is whose. You understand? Mm. Got, there's an abbreviation of the member's name, right, up there. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just now when I enlarge the photo, it I, crop out the. Yeah, yeah. Never I mind. guess I'll just fix it. I'll just yeah. fix it. Yes, you have just fix it. Okay. Yeah. Uh? Mm, okay. 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 So so let, let me start today's lecture. Then after that, I I want to help to solve some problems. Uh, some team that send emails to me. Okay. So just I'll stop thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share my Thank slide. You, okay. Thank welcome. You okay. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes or no? Yes, doctor. Okay, yes, doctor. Okay, okay, let me start. Okay, we start the, as usual, the quote first. Uh, one of the best lessons you can learn in life is to master how to remain calm. So you can see this picture is a thunderstorm. So it's just like during your test one, some of you encounter that, you know, network problem. And even the last Friday, you see, my side was having a storm. Then suddenly I was disconnected. You see, so then the, I, I lost the contact with the student. They were still presenting and also uh, some students also having problems that uh, they got no sound and so on. You see, so this is uh, something, a risk event that uh, I already expected that is going to happen during any lecture or any of your uh, tutorial sessions. So uh, that day was really a very sudden one, but that's why we remain calm. So in the end, I realized that I was disconnected. So I tried to connect uh, back, but still cannot. 
So it still failed. Then in the end, decided to switch off my phone and then restart my phone. Then only I managed to connect back everything. You see, so that's why you you have to remain calm and then see what should I do now. So if you really panic, you don't know what to do. So same thing in your during the test. If something happened, you know, no connection. Uh, you know, some of you, I realize some of you realize that you just get out, you get out from the system, and then you log in back again, and then you are back again. So maybe there's a one way that you can do. So you remain calm and you must prepare for all kind of options that you can the solution you can take to overcome the problem that you're going to face. So you must get prepared. You understand? Okay. So now good morning to everyone. So today we are going to have another lecture. So this is about project progress and performance measurement and evaluation. So this will be your chapter five, right? So this is where we are now monitoring your progress. So will be last lecture will be the audit and closure. Okay, now, so first we look at structure of a project monitoring information system. So creating a project monitoring system involves determining. So what data to collect? So once you have started your project, you're progressing. So you need to monitor how well you are progressing. Are you ahead of time, behind time, you're over cost, on cost, or you are still under cost. That means not overspend yet. So you need to collect data in order to understand what is your current progress status. So what data to collect in order to, to help you to know what is your progress status now? So how, when, and who will collect the data? Who is going to do this? And when you're going to do this? And how to do this? So how to analyze the data? Once you collected, how do you know how to analyze the data so that you can have a conclusion that you make of your progress status? How to report current progress to management? So of course, there are many many uh, management uh, levels that you need to report to them. The top management, the senior, the middle level, you know, the functional and all this and, and also your team members. So you need to know all these things first in order to uh, capture the data and uh, disseminate all your information or update your management about your status. So next, we look at project monitoring systems for control. So what is the information system structure? So first we go into one by one, which is the first one, what data are collected? So the first question is what kind of data you have to collect? So what data you have to collect? So, so, so one of it will be the current status of project. I think there's some kind of echo here. Right? Okay, hopefully it's, it's <laughs> okay, schedule and cost. So next is the remaining cost to complete the project. And then next is the date that project will be completed. The potential problems to be addressed now. So that some of you send me uh, emails about the problems you encounter. So one of the problems that uh, one of the team leaders sent me is until today, you are not able to get a good respondent, uh, the participant to answer your uh, hot assessment. So that's one problem you are facing now. So you have to, you know that it's quite a uh, high risk. This event is happening because you only have, uh, according to his email, he has just, his team just collected six until today. So that's very few and you have to reach the target of one, two, zero. So you need to address this problem now. So next one is out of control activities that requiring intervention. So also another team in a tutorial group five, having a problem, there's a conflict among the team members. So one of the team members voice it out, you see? So this one is really out of control and uh, require my intervention. So I went in and then I solved the problem last Friday, okay? So you need to do take some actions immediately. Look at what is your status, what is going on, what are the issues, what's the problem? Then you quickly act on this. So before you drag on to too late, then if when they are finishing, then it's too late for you to solve the problem. So next is the cost and or the, sh the schedule overruns and the reason for them. So as you go along, you do the tracking and realize that, oh, I'm over cost or oh, I'm behind time. So what's the reason? What are the causes for this? Why causing all these problems? So understanding the problem, then only you can take action. So next, because you're already having this problem, then you forecast of the overruns at time of project completion. So you know that uh, overruns is going to happen. I'm going to be uh, over scheduled. So how far is the over scheduled by how many days or how many weeks? So you try to forecast when will be my new project completion date. Okay, so next continue. So next is you collecting the data and uh, your analysis. So who will collect the project data? So you have to assign somebody to collect this project data. How will data be collected? So how are you going to collect? Is it interview or is it through email you're asking? 
uh, when will the data be collected? So when? When is it? After your project started, is it one week later, two weeks later, or when? When you should collect all this kind of progress data? Who will compile and analyze the data? Who will be assigned the task to collect this data? And then you sit down, compile all the things, and analyze and give present the findings. So next is reports and reporting. So who will receive the report? So once you have analyzed the data, then you generate a report of your status. So who who are you supposed to send the reports to which level? Top management, uh, top management is who are the people? And how will the reports be transmitted? How are you going to deliver? How are you going to send to them? Okay. And when? So when is the time you are supposed to send the reports to the different levels? The middle level, the functional, you know, and the senior level and so on. So how to do all these things? So you need to understand how to do it. Okay. So next, the project progress report format. So inside your project progress report, what kind of contents you must report? So progress since last report. So because you are having regular updating of your management about your progress data. So let's say you already have done one progress report. So this is the first progress report from that day I submitted and this is my second one. So that is called the progress since the last report. So next, the current status of project. So you usually you have to report about what is your current, the, the latest uh, status now will be about your schedule. Uh, what is your timeline? Is it ahead of time, behind time or on time? Then cost. How much is it? Is it on cost exact, exactly I allocated or I already over cost? I spend more than I allocated what I plan or I still uh, under cost. I didn't spend as much as what I plan. So next is your scope. Uh, scope is your like, for example, you're doing the uh, C test, you're doing the uh, uh, host assessment and also the, the COVID-19 and the game one. Then your scope will be you need to collect 120 sets of feedback. So here, have you achieved the 120 sets of uh, respondents that you collected their feedback? from this the faculty and the departments that you have defined, then you can know. So if I already achieved by this date, because you remember you, in your network diagram, after this certain date, the timeline, you must achieve uh, that, you must complete that task. So by that time, you see that it's, maybe it's not achieving uh, the target and the time is not up yet, but you can estimate roughly. So if you uh, set, let's say three weeks, now already one week gone, and you only collected six sets, of course, you will start to feel, oh my God, I only got six sets. I got two more weeks only. Do you think within two weeks I can achieve 120 sets? Looks like quite unlikely. So you know that you will not be achieving the scope now. So you have to do something. So next is the cumulative trend. So later you can see a diagram, uh, or one of the chart that you're going to learn using the earned value. You see the cumulative. So as you accumulate along, then you can see what is the trend. Is it you are progressing well or you're going negative side? Next is the problems and issues since the last report. Since the last report, you solve some problem. And this report here, you uh, voice out what are the problems that is happening now. So one is the actions and resolution of earlier problems. You report the previous one, what problem and how you solve it. Number two, what are the new variances and problems identified? So currently, what are the new differences? Variances means difference, difference from the previous one. And what are the new problems that is uh, arise now? So you need to identify now you address in this current report. Okay, and then next one will be the corrective action that plan. See what to what action to take to correct these problems and facing now and the differences. They say this is over scheduled. So what kind of action I should take to overcome this behind time problem? So you learn from a previous lecture that how to catch up. Then you apply some of the approaches that you can use how to catch up if you are behind time. Like for example, you use uh, overtime, you add more people, you know, you do outsourcing and so on. Uh, okay. So we'll, I will help after uh, one team to do uh, solving the problem of not enough getting enough of respondent in the short while. Okay. So next, okay, the project control process. So first you need to know the term control. What's the meaning of control? Control means the process of comparing actual performance against the plan to identify the deviation. So it means you collect the data of the current data, you compare what is actually happening with your the one that you planned earlier. Okay. You evaluate the causes of action, then you know, oh, something happened. So what should I do now? And you take appropriate corrective action. And from there, you try to catch up, do something, okay? So that you can uh, still meet the deadline, still within the project cost, and then you meet the scope. So next, so what are the project control steps? So step number one, setting a baseline plan. So that's what you have done. So remember, you study from the first lecture until the uh, current one that you have done a uh, WBS, all these are all your planning. Then you have the, all the network diagram and your responding metrics. You assign who to do all the tasks. So these are all known as baseline plan. 
So number two, measuring progress and performance. So now you are today you are learning how to measure the progress, how to measure your performance. So number three, comparing the plan against the actual. Uh, how what technique you are going to learn to compare what you plan with your what is actually happening now. Number four, taking action. So you know that something happened now, so you have to take action now. For example, the conflict among the team members. Uh, for example, not enough uh, but, uh, respondents from the feedback that you collected until today. Uh, maybe there are other issues that, okay, uh, my one or another issue is over cost. Uh, so these are the things you have to take action now. So what to do? So before the project is going to end, you try to take action. Next, monitoring time performance. So what are the tools that you can use to monitor this? The tools used to catch negative variances from plan and communicate project schedule status. So basically, if you want to look at the timeline, you can use these two uh, methods or approaches. First one is called tracking and baseline gun chart. That means you plot a gun chart. Uh, later, next slide, I'll show you. So this one will show the expected, the actual, the trend data for event duration performance. And the second type is called the control charts. These control charts will allow you to plot the difference in schedule time along the clicker path with the actual point on the critical path. So you will see this in the next uh, two slides. So this is the first one, the baseline and the tracking gun charts. So you need for the chapter five, you need to draw this one, your baseline gun chart. So remember, you have the, all the activities, you label according A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, and then what is the duration? So this one is the duration, the baseline duration. This is a bar here, the uh, blue bar. And then after that, follow this one. You can see this one is the interdependency. So this one is finished to start. This one completed, then start with the others. So which one first? You can see basically which one continue with which one. And whether there's any slack here, the white one will be the slack. So this one is what you plan. And what you plan is known as baseline gun chart. So you plot this one first. Then after that, you plot the second one. The second one is called the tracking gun chart, which is showing the status through period by period. So remember your uh, allocation of, remember you also allocated the uh, cost for each period, some of you do it in weeks, the, uh, week one, week two, week three, and so on. And then how much for material and the labor and so on. So this one is the duration, not yet showing the resources. So this one duration for all the tasks that you have to perform, the timeline. Then after that, after plotted base, baseline, you take back this one, but you put below this, the plan one, that's another actual bar. So this bar is the actual progress. So the first activity, the original plan is two units of time. And now you monitor, you started the project and you keep track of what is the status now. So if also completed within two units of time, then this blue bar is showing the same length as the plan. So that means what you plan, you finish according to your plan. So next one also, uh, activity B is also same. And then activity C, you can, what you plan was supposed to be from unit two until the unit six, and then you have to have one slack. Then according to your actual monitoring, you realize that you only need three units instead of four units and you completed. That means in this case, you are ahead of time. So your plan is four units of time, but actually you only need three units of time. So this is your actual one. So after that, started with the D and so on. So D, you can see this one is what your plan is three units of time. And you also started uh, accordingly to the date is period of five. And today, this dotted line means today is your tracking point. So this period six is the day that you're tracking. So for my course, your project progress for your chapter five, you take today uh, as your tracking day. So today you are going to track your project progress. So go according to your period. Okay, this one can be a week in terms of week. So if you put days, then your uh, duration is going to be very long, I believe. So you can put, for example, one period can be, you treat it as 10 days also can, you understand? So you can have one period is 10 days or one period is seven days, one period is five days, it's up to you. No need, not necessarily is one, one unit of time is one day, one day. Okay, this one you can, if you treat it as week will be good or you can treat it, uh, some, you treat it, let's say uh, I treat one period is five days or one period is 10 days. If you got, uh, your duration is quite long, you understand? Then you got uh, some of this here, a few periods here. So you put today as your tracking day, you understand? You plot the actual gun chart, then you monitor according to the progress now and you track today dot dot dot, this dot dotted line will be your two days tracking period. And then you check what's your status. Like for example, the D here, you started is period five according to your plan and you actually also started period five. But today is a tracking day. Your plan is supposed to take a three units of time to finish activity D. 
but you just started one period and this happened to be your uh, tracking day now so you dot 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 here and you still haven't finished the other two units of time but you on this day you realize that the d cannot be completed with the remaining two unit of time that you plan and you require another extra unit so you see this one the the remaining uh, duration this is the bar here okay the hash bar here then you can see you need extra one unit of time that means this activity according to your tracking today status you realize that you will be behind time of one unit of time so you just do this you see on the tracking day you try to forecast predict if I not check finish, what would be the delay? And originally I plan finish on the 12 unit of time. Now I realize on the tracking day, I know that I'm going to be behind time. I'll be exceeding one unit of time, ending on the period 13 instead of 12. Okay. So this one is quite easy to plot. So you just uh, adjust accordingly. What is your actual progress now? It's just like uh, one of the activity is let's say is collect the feedback from your respondent. Some of the team already achieved. Let's say maybe you achieve 120 even before the set duration you set. Then your bar will be shorter. But if you today you are still ongoing is somewhere here and you predicting like uh, the, the team from uh, exactly is kind one. He told me that you only collected six sets. So you're quite uh, worried now because let's say you got two more weeks. Then you say I don't think I can achieve 120. So you have to extend the bar. You see or not? So this will be your uh, remaining period you, you need. So this is part of the data that you are trying to forecast uh, the duration extended in order to achieve the target of 120 sets. So you do it accordingly, according to what you think is going to happen. So this is called the actual tracking. Understand now? The second bar. So you compare, you can see how you are progressing. Is it progressing accordingly or you are uh, not very good and you have to take some actions now? Okay. The second one, the control chart. The control chart is something that you plot against. This is along the critical path. So if you fall according to the critical path, then you are along the zero point. But if you are below, you are behind. Okay. So you are using the slack, then you are negative. You go down. So next, if you do, once you are doing the tracking, you realize that you are below, negative. So you are behind schedule. Then you start to take corrective actions. You do something to catch up. Then after that, uh, what are the corrective actions you perform? You have done it correct correct correctly and using the correct approaches then you start to catching up then you can see the point going up to become positive which show that at the point of today's tracking period six you will catch up and you are ahead of schedule instead of behind schedule so that's why this kind of chart will help you to tell you what is your progress now what's your status now do you need to take some actions now before it is too late okay so these are the two types of tools you can use for the timeline tracking Okay, next, you're going to learn today, going to learn a method called earn value analysis. So before that, uh, try to understand uh, what's the, why you need to learn this earn value analysis. So first one, the disparity among monitoring system. So you need, we are applying the time phase baseline plan. So this will correct the failure of most monitoring system to connect a project's actual performance to its schedule and the forecast budget. So normally we will say, oh, if you, let's say certain time, then uh, this amount you spend, it shows that you are behind time or ahead of time. So that kind of estimation or that kind of judgment is not very good. So we look at examples uh, uh, below here. Okay, the system that measure only cost variance is only talking about the difference in the amount, the money that you use. Do not identify resource and the project cost problems associated with falling behind or progressing ahead of time. If you're just looking at the money, you cannot tell actually you are ahead of time or you are behind time. Cannot tell exactly what is the status. So now, example here, uh, there is a high tech firm is implementing an R and D project. So the original plan calls for completion of the project in ten months at a cost of two hundred thousand per month for a total cost of two million dollars Malaysian ringgit. Ah, okay. So after uh, you after the half halfway, okay. So then your top management wishes to assess the status of this project progress so that they ask you okay what's the status now so because it's 10 months so after five months so half of it then you will say if accordingly if half of it two hundred thousand, and it should be one hundred thousand. okay so the total is two million so let's say is it hundred thousand yeah after halfway through so what are the possibility now now the following information is available so first one is the actual cost for the first five months are 1.3 million so it's supposed to be 1 million because it's half of it so the plan budget cost for the first five months are 1 million see you plan is half of it 200,000 uh, is for 10 months so half of it is 1 million right so but 
when you capture the actual, what is the actual amount you already spent is already 1.3 million. So quick question here, what conclusion would you make? How, what kind of things, inferences can you make just based on this, uh, this above information? So it's telling you, okay, the project uh, needs 10 months. So after five months, according to my plan, it should spend 1 million only. But actual progress uh, capture the data is 1.3 million, is exceeding 0 0.3 million. So what is the implication? Okay, what do you think? Anyone? What is the meaning? Project is already over budget. Ah, uh, over budget. So you think it's over budget. So based on this, because your plan is 1 million, now it's extra 0 0.3 million. So you feel that definitely it is over budget. So that's your first impression, right? Okay, so let's see. Now, so the first possible answer is what you say is correct. So the project has a 300,000 cost overrun. Okay, that's just possible. But it can be other possibilities. Or the second possible answer can be the project is way ahead of schedule. I'm moving very, very far, far ahead already. I completed more than what I supposed to finish. And the 300,000 represents the payments to labor working ahead of schedule. Maybe I pay extra money for the overhead, you know, the, the labor cost that is doing OT over time, or I add more labor so that they finish more work than uh, until the five months. So that means I spend a lot more, but I already completed more tasks than what I planned. That could be also another possible answer. The third one could be, it is also possible that the project have both the cost overrun and also behind the schedule. So you read overrun and also, but you are also at the same time behind time. That means some tasks not completed and you are overspent. So this data do not tell the actual situation because of this. That's why you, uh, this chapter introduced the earned value analysis. So before that, look at another second case. So what about this case here? What if the following information is available? The actual cost for the first five months now is less. It's 800,000, not even 1 million yet. But your plan budget cost for the first five months are 1 million. So again, the question, can you conclude that the project is costing less than the expected 200,000 per month? Yes or no? No. Yeah. Can be yes, can be no. Okay, so not necessary. Okay, so what will be the interpretation of this kind of uh, uh, project uh, uh, data that you collected? What, how you interpret, you see? How, how can you interpret this kind of uh, status? So the first possible answer, answer number one, the project, it can be behind schedule. The 200,000 may represent the planned work that has not started. So you're still uh, left behind with 200,000. So that means this 200,000, the work is not yet started. So that's why you are behind schedule. Or there's a second possible answer is, it is also possible that the project is behind schedule and also over in cost. How do you know? It should be 1 million, but then it's only 800,000. You think it's less, but it could be also, uh, it's behind schedule. You didn't finish the task. That's why you didn't spend the money, but actually you are also over cost. But from this amount, you cannot tell. So again, this data do not tell what is the actual situation. So by comparing the cost, cannot tell what is your actual status. And because of that, you learn the method called earned value analysis. So this is called earned value cost or schedule system. So this is an integrated project management system based on the earned value concept that uses a time phase. That means you allocate time period by period and the budget period by period, the baseline to compare with the actual and the plan schedule and cost. Then after that, after you plan period by period, then you capture the actual progress period by period and you compare these two values. Okay, to come up with a conclusion. So now, these are some of the glossary of terms. So the main one will be the EV, PV, AC, CV, SV. So these are the main ones that you should know, okay? So EV means earned value for a task is simply the percent complete times its original budget. So that means you have to allocate how many percent I completed tasks and then I'll multiply with the original budget allocated for the task, okay? So stated differently, EV is the percent of the original budget that has been earned by actual work completed. Actual work completed, actually how much budget that you actually work done from that, you earn it, okay? So PV is your plan one, the plan time phase baseline of the value of the work schedule. So an approved cost estimate of the resources schedule in the time phase cumulative baseline. So this is the old term. BCWS is called budgeted cost of the work schedule. So the old 
uh, old terminology they use BCWS. BCWS actually it means PV. So next term is AC. Actual uh, is the actual cost. AC means actual cost of the work completed. So you have to monitor what is your actual cost for each of the tasks you assign until uh, for each period. So the sum of the cost incurred in accomplishing the work. So there's the old terminology is ACWP, which is called actual cost of the work performed. So in short form, today's te uh, terminology, we use AC only. So next term is called CV. CV stands for cost variance, the difference in cost. Variance means difference. Is the difference between the earned value and the actual cost for the work completed to date where? So there's a formula. CV is equal to EV minus AC. So you need to have EV then minus the AC, then it's equal to CV. So next is the SV. SV is the schedule variance. Is the difference between the earned value and the baseline, baseline to date where the SV equals to EV minus PV. So you can see AC is EV minus AC. Uh, uh, CV is equal to EV minus AC. Then SV will be EV minus PV. You understand? So it's very easy. So these two formulas you have to remember. So next is the BAC. BAC is your budgeted cost at completion. That means this is your total cost. Budgeted, what is your estimated total cost of the baseline or the project cost account? So next is EAC. It's the uh, stand for estimated cost at completion. So this is the forecasting one. This includes cost to date plus the revised estimated cost for the work, work remaining that you need to complete. So ETC will be estimated cost to complete the remaining work. And next one, the cost variance at completion. So we, VAC indicates expected actual over, it could be over time or underrun cost at the completion time. Okay, so you need to remember these are the basic terminology, the glossary of term you have to learn, have to know before you can learn this earned value analysis. Okay, so VAC. So VAC is a cost variance at completion and the formula is VAC minus EAC. There's an E here. What is this uh, B, uh, EACE? Where EACE is derived by estimators in the field. That means this estimated forecasting value is estimated by an expert. Somebody who is expert in cost estimation. When you are behind time, this expert will estimate for you that you will be finishing at what point and then with what is the over cost amount. Or alternatively, this formula can be calculated using this one. Cost variance at completion instead of EACE, you use BAC minus EACF. So where EACF is derived from a formula using actual and earned value cost. So this F is the actual is calculated using formula, not by the expert. So replace the expert giving value, you replace by a formula. So you're going to learn this in a short while. So VAC indicates expected actual overrun or underrun cost at completion. So this one will show you at the point at you're predicting at the actual uh, finishing point, will it be over or underrun the cost? Okay, so maybe you're still very confusing, don't quite understand, it's okay. So you look at the example, then you will be able to understand. Now, so next, how you do this? Developing an integrated cost schedule system. So you have performed all this. So the first one, you have to define the work using a WBS. Of course, your one is called PBS, okay? Process Breakdown Structure. So in your PBS, you remember you define your scope. You have your work packages, the lowest level. Then you have your deliverables. You have the organization units from each department, okay, right? The coding, uh, data collection, data analysis, all the different department. Resources, you got the manpower and the material you require to use. And then budget, you allocated how much money for each task. Remember your WP, the detailed WP cost estimation, the micro approach that you perform. So you have done all this. That, that is your first step you have to do. So next, the second step. Second step also, you have allocated, developed the work and resource schedules. schedules. So first, so remember, first, you have your priority metrics, responsive metrics. So you have to schedule the resources to activities. Who is in charge? Who are the R? Who are the S? So you allocated resources to perform the activities. Next, you have the time phase, uh, the work packages into a network. You also have plotted your network diagram. So this part also done. So you can see the step one, step two, they are part of the planning. Next, followed by you develop a time phase budget using work packages included in an activity. And this is called the accumulate budgets, PV. So remember, you have to plan the micro, you got each period, you allocated week one, week two, and uh, which week you are allocated resources and the money. So the detail, the 
the detail uh, micro approach you use in your cost estimation, but you have not put it in the table yet. So after this, you're going to do this. Okay. Step number four, at the work package level, you collect the actual cost for the work performed. Uh, this one, you have, to, you have to go and sit down. The team member who is doing that particular task, then you monitor up to this point. What is the actual cost that I should spend for this? Remember, you got the micro, micro cost estimation using the detail WP. So each of these have a period, right? So each period, the person who is respon responsible, go and uh, go and check. By right, you should uh, collect the actual work performed. And what is the cost you need to spend in order to finish that task for that all the period that you sign for the WP? Next, you multiply the percent complete times the origin budget. You see, you already got the PV. You, now you need to estimate how many percent I have completed the task. Use that percentage. So let's say this is a task of uh, collecting uh, the feedback from the respondent. Okay. So let, let's say the, the, the Zachary Iskandar's case is out of uh, 120, you only collected six until today. So now you check. This is, let's say, after one week over already. So what do you think? What's the percent you complete? What do you think is the percent? Then you estimate this is very low, right? For example, let's, let's say we treat is, is, uh, you need to collect 100 uh, respondents. So let's say this is six. Let's say assume this will be six percent. So then my task completed until today is only six percent. So you use the six percent multiply by the cost that you allocated for collect the feedback, the respondent in your uh, host assessment. So let's say the amount you put is a uh, one hundred one hundred ringgit simple. Let, let's say a simple example. So six percent, six percent times one hundred. So you will get the EV. You understand? Just the percent complete multiplied by the cost allocated for the task. So next, the one will be you compute the schedule variance. Remember, the cost where the schedule is SV. SV is equal to EV minus PV. And then the cost variance CV equals to EV minus AC. So you just calculate using these two formulas. Okay. So now we look at one example here. So this one is the project management uh, system overview. So just now what I explained. So this is the organization you cross over with the WBS. In your case, it's EBS. So inside your database, you have the work packages that you keep track of the time resources, the labor, the material, the support effort, the budget, uh, who are the responsible person, then the performance standards, okay, whether you achieve your scope. So from there, you have, this is your plan schedule baseline. All these things is called your plan schedule baseline. And now you perform control. So control is, you have to collect the data, compare with all these plan value. So you control in terms of what is your timeline, the cost you spend, and the specification by the variables and the organization, whether you have achieved all these three main things here. So this is your control point. Now, development of a project baseline. So what is what are the purposes of having a baseline, your PV? So this is an anchor point for measuring performance. You need to have baseline so that you can measure how well you are progressing or how poor you are progressing. So a plan cost and expected schedule against with actual cost and schedule are measured. See? So your, you have a plan one and then you collect the actual progress status. Compare with these two values, you will know how well you are performing in terms of cost and in terms of the time. So a basis for cash flows and awarding progress payments. So at the same time, because some of the uh, activity you require to pay money. So at this certain stage, how much money I should allocate the cash flow for this period. So a summation of time phase budget, the cost accounts as some work packages along a project timeline. See, it costs over the time phase period by period you allocated the budget and which unit from which organization unit is in charge along the timeline. Okay, so what costs are included in your baseline? So what is actually the cost that incurred in your baseline cost? So remember, you already done this, your labor cost, the equipment you use, material cost, and the project direct overhead costs. Now, so what are the rules? Remember just now, in order to calculate EV, you need to estimate the percentage. So what kind of rule, how can I, what kind of guideline I should use to estimate the percent that I completed? So this is the rules for placing costs in the baseline. The costs are placed exactly as they are expected to be earned. That means you earn the work done, how much you amount you pay and you earn it. So in order to track them to their point of origin. So how to apply percent or complete? How can I decide? So this is a rule that commonly used. It's called percent complete rule. So costs are periodically assigned to a baseline as units of work are completed over the duration of a work package. So every work package, you assign the cost. So along this, based on this cost that you spend, you allocate the percentage. 
how many percent I complete based on the cost I already spent. Okay, so that's called percent complete rule. So next, methods of variance analysis. Comparing the earned value with the expected schedule value. There are two values. Remember, this uh, comparing expected uh, schedule value will be SP. And then with the actual cost will be the, uh, with the AC, actual cost. Then it's the cost variance, DV. So assessing status of a project. So this will require what? How to know your status? These are the three values you need to know. So the required data element will be data budgeted cost of the work schedule is called PV. Budgeted cost of the work completed is called EV. Actual cost of the work completed is called AC. So you have to, you yourself have to give, assign the actual cost to each of the tasks that you perform along the each period of time. So this EV, remember, is the percent complete multiplied by the PV. Then you get into the EV value. Okay. So calculate the schedule and the cost variances. So if you get a positive, okay, a positive variance indicates a desirable condition. Of course, if your value positive means you are ahead of time, you are under cost. So while a negative variance suggests problems or changes that, that you have to take action now, okay, something that has taken place, something is gone wrong, and you are behind time. If anything, it come out, you see, the EV minus PV is negative, EV minus the AC negative, that means there's a cost variance which is negative. That means you are overspent, okay, over budget. Anything is negative value is something bad. It's not something good. If positive, that means you are performing very well. Okay, so now we look at more detail about cost variance, CV. So the CV indicates if the work accomplished using the labor and materials cost costs more or less than was planned at any point in the project. That means the CV can be positive it can be negative depending on where is the EV. Next is a schedule variance SP. So this presents an overall assessment in dollar terms of the progress of all work packages in the project schedule today. So in terms, remember just now you are tracking the timeline, you draw the gun chart. That one can tell you exactly how many units of time you're ahead of time or behind time. But in earned value, the schedule variance which represents the project progress in terms of time frame, but is in terms of money not in terms of the time unit. So this one is a measurement in terms of uh, money. Okay, remember the difference is in terms of money to tell you what is having completed that you earn of the work schedule until today. Now, there are a few, you can see this line, uh, this graph here shows you the cost schedule graph. So remember the term here, okay, so what is the value here? The, this line, in this graph here, this line is show, this one is the line called PV. This is your plan one, whatever you estimated. And this, remember, BAC is the budgeted cost at completion. That is your, remember your first per, uh, post objective statement, the project objective statement, the post statement. You mentioned that you are doing what, what, what within the cost of how much. Uh, this is the cost amount here. Your BAC, that is your statement. So let's say you finish the uh, cost of uh, collecting data for the C test. You are estimating that finishing at the point of 15,000. So 15,000 is your BAC. Okay, so this is along all this will be your plan value, PV, baseline, the center one. Next, you will keep track of what is actually going on. So this one you have to assign. As you go along, what is the actual cost that incurred? So this is your actual cost, AC. So now, at this point here, this is tracking line. It's today. It's a tracking line. So let's say the period of time, this is 20 to 30. So its center will be 25th. Okay, during the 25th unit of time, you do a tracking. And this line here, this is the this one is the earn value, the actual value that you earn. Okay, remember it's the percentage complete multiplied by PV. Then you get this line here. So you bear in mind that what is the value of SV? SV is this the EV minus the PV. This line, this point minus this point is your SV. So you can see EV is lower than the PV. So that means the ending will be negative. So SV in this point is negative minus SV. Yeah? So next, what is this CV? CV is actually EV, this point, minus the AC. Again, EV is lower point than the higher point. So a lower value minus a higher value, that means it will be also negative. So looking at this graph, you can tell this project, based on this earned value analysis for this project, this at this tracking point, today's tracking point today here, you know that you are behind schedule. You are over cost by looking at this. So at this point, you also, you know, you are already behind time and also over cost. Now you start to do some forecasting. So you're trying to forecast by the time I'm supposed to finish at this point here, at this uh, amount, okay, which is 
uh, 400 okay in uh, this is original plan finishing at 400,000 so now I'm predicting here because I'm here I know I at this point I'm behind time and over cost what will be my new estimated finishing point and the cost so you dot, 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 dot. okay this dotted line is your new forecasting point that means instead of finishing on the 45th unit of time I estimated my new finishing point will be the 50 unit of point okay it's that means uh, behind we create five unit of time next also you can see the cost originally supposed to be this line which is 400,000 now it's going to end up at uh, this point is 500,000 will be somewhere along here before uh, 500,000 so it's somewhere along here so it could be uh, around uh, before 500 okay so maybe 400 something maybe 400 480 or something like that okay I'm not sure so it should be less than 500,000 but it's exceeding the 400 400,000 so it's more than this amount now Okay, understand so this graph tells you at the tracking point whether you are ahead of time or behind time or over cost or behind cost or on cost okay so now we are going to look at one example but before that there are four possibilities so remember the earn value review exercise here shows you just now that point shows you is a negative negative so you see just now the point is ev is the lowest point and then center is the pv ac is the highest okay so if ev minus pv is the SV is negative, right? EV minus AC is also negative. So that this this kind of situation is called you are over you are over cost, you are behind schedule. Okay. The next possibility is your EV is ahead, is on top of these two points. So if EV minus AC it will be positive, which is your cost variance. EV minus PV at this point, a higher point minus lowest point, it will be positive. The schedule variance is also positive. So in this case, both positive, positive, it means your cost variance, it means positive. Remember, something positive means something good. So that means your cost is under cost. You are not overspent. So if schedule variance is positive, means you are ahead of time. Okay. So there are other, another two more situations will be your EV is somewhere in the center. AC is above, but PV is below. So if schedule variance will be EV minus PV, it will be positive. So that means you are ahead of time. But EV minus AC will be negative. That means you are over cost. So for next, the last case will be EV is here, but PV is on top and then AC is below. So if EV minus the PV, so it will be negative. Lower value minus a higher value, that is negative. That means you are behind time. And EV minus AC, this is higher value minus a smaller value, then it will be positive. That means you are under cost. Okay. So these are the four possibilities. So you apply this to your project. Today is your tracking day. So you calculate your status. Today is your tracking day. You are ending with SVCV negative negative, or you are having SVCV both positive positive, or you are one SV is positive, CV negative, or the choice of uh, the option of SV is negative, CV is positive. So based on today's tracking, what is your status out of this four? So you should, you can get one of this four. If you are behind time. Then you should get this one. SV negative, but you are still uh, under cost. Then it will be this situation. But if you are doing the team that doing very well, you already achieved your 120 sets long, long ago, and then you are still under cost, then you will get both positive, positive. But if you are both behind time and then over cost, then you will get both negative, negative. Or it can be this case as well. Okay. So today is your checking day, and you will apply to your project and learn this earn value analysis approach. Okay. How to do this? This is the example here. Now, the developing a status report here. So this is a hypothetical example. Here, we have a few assumptions to help you to understand this example easier. So make it simplify it. So each cost account has only one work package. And each cost account will be represented as an activity on the network. So the project network early start times will serve as the basis for assigning the baseline value. The moment you start, you assign the cost, everything. Okay, The timeline start. And then whatever resources allocated will start. The baseline value will be assigned linearly. It's a like diagonal line, okay, straight line, unless stated differently. That means if the value is, let's say, is 10,000, and then every period is 1,000, 1,000, it's linear way. Okay? Unless I say that this second period is uh, 5,000, and then it varies. From the moment work on an activity begins, some activity costs will be incurred each period until activity is completed. So every time, every period will have a cost incurred. Okay, now you look at this example here. So this is the WBS with the cost account. Remember the costing of the 
organization with this cost here is called the cost account. So here we simplified this uh, hypothetical example here. The total of this digital camera prototype, the design build project will be $320,000. So involving this design specification shall empower uh, memory software, zoom system, assemble, test. So each of these, this is amount according to the work WBS. This one is the breakdown according to the uh, OBS, the organization structure. So each contribute here will be one, uh, one WP for each of these, the crossing over in the uh, cost account. To so simplify this example here, so each one will have one. So except for this uh, example, assembly here, you got uh, 150, 120 here and 30 here, which involve uh, example and test here for this assembly from this OBS here. And total of these two here should be the same, 320,000, 320,000 here. Okay, but this is in terms of organization unit. This is in terms of work breakdown structure. So now you apply this. You load this value into your PV chart. Okay, so before that, we do some tracking first on the timeline. So you have the activities A, B, C, D, E, F. A is design spec, shell and power, which is your WBS up there. Then what is the unit of time required? So this one requires two unit of time, followed by this task is two unit time, but got a slack of two unit of time. Then the C you got a four unit of time, no slack. Next D you got three unit of time and one slack. And next E you have three unit of time. And last one F got two unit of time. So this is your actual plan timeline. Okay. Your gun chart, baseline gun chart. So this is known as baseline gun chart. So next, okay, then you load this. You load this, your uh, baseline budget needs. This is your total PV. So remember, you just copy this A, B, C, D, E, F, put down into here, activity, your all your work packages. You put here, this column here. Next, this is the duration. So this is, remember, two unit of time. So two, this is two, and then you've got a slide of two here. You see, so you just uh, label this. Remember, you also have a network diagram, your early start, late finish, all this. So you load inside here, you put all the, all the information into this part here. Next, your total PV, what's the total cost? So you allocated, this is from your, remember your WP, the detailed WP. For this task, what is the total amount? So it's called your plan value. So you look into here, this part. And then remember, this one is two unit of time. So it will be two unit time. So this is 20,000. So you need two unit time, you allocated is 10,000, 10,000. So it will be 20,000. So this is called, this part is the by period, 10 bring down here. This is cumulative, 10, 10 here. Then another 10 here, that means if, 10 plus 10, this one here becomes 20. So this plus this equal to this here. Okay, this part, this 10 plus this 10 give this. This plus this equal give this. So this part is called cumulative PV by period. So you can see you allocated linearly unless you specify otherwise. So this one PV for B is 15,000, but it's starting, you see, it's from starting from a period two onwards until period four, two to four. So two unit of time. So you, in this case, is you stated the first period is 5,000, next period is 10,000, not half half, okay? Not, not, not a 7.5, 7.5. So it's 5 and then 10. So next one is 100, is 20, 30, 30, 20. So this is a cost incurred for this four period of time that allocated for C and so on, okay? So this one, you have to draw this. So to do earn value, remember, you already have this. Now, your question, maybe you're asking me, what is this? So you have to discuss. You allocated the cost accordingly evenly or some of the period will be less or some of the period will be more. So you have to discuss among all the team members. You uh, allocated this according to your WP. Remember, you got the, the WP DT1 period by period. So you look inside here. Okay, understand? And that is the total cost for that particular activity. Yeah? Okay, you put this. This one is just copy copy me. So very easy. Just this one is an add, add cumulative. So you add, you finish. So remember, the timeline here is you finishing at the 11 unit of time. So this one should be also finishing 11 unit of time. So remember, this 320 is called the BAC, budgeted your actual cost. Okay, the cost that you plan going to finish will be ending at 320,000. <coughs> now you start doing this earn value. <coughs> you analyze period by period. So this is the, called the digital camera prototype status report, periods 1 to 3. You do it period by period. You only need to calculate this. The first thing you need to do is the EV. Remember EV, the formula is the percent complete times is original budget. So CV, the formula is cost variance is EV minus AC. Schedule variance SV is EV minus EV. So AC is the actual cost of the work completed. CV 
maybe it's the time phase baseline of the value of the work schedule. Okay, that is your work packages value. Huh? Okay, total cost for each activity. So now period one. So remember this was the original chart. This chart is called the PV, plan value. Now your task A is the first task that you start. And the percent complete after the first period, remember, you need two units of time. So after one period of time, you completed, you allocated 10,000. 10, and you estimated your completion. Okay. Your completion, the percent you complete, percent complete, lah, is 50%. So you use 50% multiplied by the total cost, which is 20,000. <coughs> so 50% multiplied by 20,000 will be 10,000. So you put 10 here. And this is what actually happened. And this is your earned value. 50% times 20 equals to 10. Okay. So this is your EV. So now, AC is the one that you keep track what is actually ongoing. So if let's say your actual ongoing is also 10,000, you put 10,000. But if you keep track what is the actual cost that incurred after one period, if let's say it's 8,000, then you put 8,000 here. You understand? This is what is actually incurred, actual cost incurred. So you just put the actual cost here, then you just apply the formula. PV is already the, this one. This PV is come from this value here. This is the one that you bring here. You understand? Okay, now you only need to calculate CV and SV by applying these two formulas. So CV equals to EV minus AC. So 10 minus 10 equals to 0. SV is EV minus PV. 10 minus 10 is also equals to 0. So what's the meaning of 0, 0? Means you are on time, you are on cost. You spend exactly the amount you plan after one period of time. You plan one unit of time. What is the schedule work you need to complete or achieve is also you achieve. Okay, according to the timeline. Right? So everything is on schedule, on cost. Zero means you are along, you're meeting everything. Okay. Next, you go on to period number two. Now, task A, after period two, you can see you need two period of time. And according to your actual plan, it's also completed. So that means it's 100% completed. And the amount spent according to here, the actual cost will be, you see, you have a, <coughs> your actual cost, you keep track, and you found out that actually by the time I finish, I spent 30,000. But actually I allocated 20,000. Okay. So then you have the finish will be 100%. Right. 100% times 20,000 will be 20,000. But the actual cost, you keep track, that's what is actually happening is 30,000. It's not 20,000. So you put 30,000 here. Then the PV, according to your plan, is this 20, this 10 plus 10 is 20. So it's 20 here. So this is this amount here. You want know, it 100% completed, so it's 20. Okay. So now again, you apply the formula. CV equals to EV minus AC. SV equals EV minus PV. So now this time, CV is 30. So your EV 20 minus 30 is 10. So SV is 20, this is also 20, 20 minus 20 is 0. So in this case, at the end of the period 2, ending period 2, what is your status now? So you realize that you are negative CV means you are over cost. But you are 0 SV means you are on schedule, you are on time, but you are over spent, right? So now you move on to period 3, the third period here. So A completed, you just copy everything this one to back to here because that's the same. So next, you see the B already started, C also started, and D also started. But B, after the third period of time, started and completed 33%. C completed 20%. Uh, this is your own estimation. Uh, okay, so the one doing care of the task has to estimate by this period, I finish how many percent of the work supposed to be scheduled for that period. Okay, D already finished 60%. So you take this percentage, multiply by the total cost, you will get your earned value. You understand? So here, 33% multiply by 15, you get 5. Then 20% multiply by 100, you get 20. 60% multiply by uh, 30, 30, is it 35 or 36, you get 21. Okay, so this is how you get the EV. Is this percent multiply by this cost here, you get this EV. So the AC is what you actually ongoing now. So you keep track of what is actually happening. And for B, the actual cost incurred, at the third period of time is 10,000. For C is 30,000. For D is 20,000. So you just uh, put here. And now the PV is you take from here. The third period of time is 5. And then this one is 20. This one is 15. Just PV, copy from this third period, put here. You understand? So now again, start to apply the formula. C 
EV is equals to EV minus AC. SV equals to EV minus EV. So just take this value, 20 minus 30 minus 10. This is the previous one, A. And now 5 minus 10 is minus 5. 20 minus 30 minus 10. 21 minus 20 is plus 1, positive. Okay. So remember this one is the, the below one is the cumulative. Huh? You just sum up all this, you get what is the total here. So now you can see the period 2 will be, this one is 0, 0. This period 2 is minus 10 and 10, the cumulative one. So for this period 3, your cumulative EV is 66. AC is 90. TV is 60. TV minus 24. You sum all this, you get a minus 24. SV is positive 6. So now you can tell, ending of period 3, what is your status now? So you can tell your A completed, but you cost over cost by 10,000. Then for the activity B, you are minus 5 for CV over cost, but you are on time. For activity C, you are also over cost, but you are still on time. For activity D, you are both positive. Positive means you are under cost. You did not overspend the allocated plan cost for that activity. And then you are also ahead of time. You see, positive positive means you are both good, very good. But anything uh, negative, it means something bad. So if it's zero, it means exactly on the cost on time. Okay, understand now? So you, you can see that if you overall, what is the status of period three is you are over cost, but you are ahead of time. So the ending of period two, you're also over cost, but you're on time. Okay, uh, period three, you are uh, ahead of time, okay, but you are over cost. So by looking at this value, you can tell what is your status now. So you do the same thing, okay, period by period, and then you do for period four, period five, period six, period seven. Okay, now you plot the chart. Okay, so period chart, uh, period seven will be your tracking day. You just take all the values, put into this graph here, and then you start to calculate. At this tracking day, on this day here, the tracking day, what is the value? So SV is equal to, remember, EV this point, this point is 160 minus the, what is the PV? PV value is 230, and you get negative 40. Uh, this one is, this one is AC. Uh, this one is PV. So it's this point, uh, this one, this is 160 minus 200, so it's minus 40. So CV is equal to this point, EV minus the AC. So it's 160 minus 230, you get minus 70. So you can see if EV is below the these two points, means both will end up with negative. So SV is negative, CV negative means on the tracking day, the seven period, you are both, you are behind time, you are over cost. Okay. So now this is your point here, and this is the plan finishing time is 11 unit of time at a cost of 320,000. But now looking at the tracking day, you know you are already doing very bad. So you are trying to forecast what is going to finish. By the time you complete the project, you will be over time and over cost. You see, because both are negative now, right? So come back to this one here. So looking at actually how much time or when you're going to complete your project, the best one is still come back to your gun chart, the project tracking gun chart. So you Compare this, the plan with the actual, and then from there, this is tracking day, you start to forecast, okay? You predict what is the finishing time, and you estimate, the new estimate, revise the timeline, and reallocate the timeline, and reschedule the starting point, and then you realize that because on the period 7 day, that I, or a 7 unit of time, I do the tracking, and I found out that this sound based on the earned value that I am behind time and over cost, when I plan this, definitely I'm not going to finish with the deadline, which is 11 units of time. Now I realize when I do the forecasting, we estimate the timeline, I'm going to end up on the 13 unit of time, which is behind 2 units of time of my planned schedule. Okay, So now you know this is the original, this is the new one. Right? So you do this for your own project uh, and see whether you will be ahead of time, your own time, or you are behind time. Okay, So you do this one. Right? So next, come back to this one here. The project roll up ending period 7. So from all this value here, for the earned value here, each of the phases here, all the period ending period 7, you put back the value into here. So each phase, other ending all the period, the cumulative one, you put back. So remember the first one at the ending of this, you finish this task, you get 0 and minus 10. Then the second one, you get 0 minus 5 for each of the activity here. You just put back into this box. So you will know uh, in terms of department. So this design, design department here is over cost. The shell here is over cost, but both on time, on time. 
but for the storage from this deployment OBS in terms of this, it is both over cost and also uh, behind time. So in terms of the work breakdown, also you realize they are the same okay, because it's matching here. So this one you can see is over cost, but on time. This one is behind time, but on cost. That means cost is exactly. Then the last one, this for this activity is both on time and on cost. Both are zero. Okay. So you plot back, then you can see uh, which unit is not performing well, which department is supposed to be responsible and take some corrective action. Now we need to understand what is this value means, the indexes to monitor the progress. So there are some indexes that you can apply and calculate. So these are called the performance indexes. So one of it is called cost performance index, short form is CPI. So this measures the cost efficiency of work accomplished today, until today. Yeah? So CPI, the formula is very easy. Just now you see the, uh, the cost variance, CV is equal to EV minus AC. This one is just divide. So using CPI become EV divided by AC. So in this example here, your CPI, remember just now the tracking point, EV is 160, AC is 320. 160 divided by 230 equals to 0 0.696 or about 0 0.7. So what is the meaning of this? 0 0.7 means what? So this means that I spend $1, but I only get back the value I earn for the work done is only worth 0 0.7. So that means if I spend $1, I should get back $1. But I didn't get back the $1, I only get back the value I earn is only worth 0 0.7. So that means that's why it end up with over cost. You understand? So next, the scheduling performance index SPI. So this measures the scheduling efficiency. How efficient is your timeline? You schedule the time. So the formula is almost the same. It just divide instead of the minus. So just now, the schedule SP is EV minus PV. This one divide. So SPI become EV divided by PV. So in this example, SPV equals to 160 divided by 200 equals to 0 0.8. So again, this means the amount I spend for one ringgit that I schedule for the work done until today, I only get to 0 0.8 worth of value that I schedule to work. Okay. So this is in terms of timeline. So next, there are other uh, type of percent uh, indexes that you can apply. So this will be called percent complete indexes. So these indexes indicate how much of the work accomplished represents of the total budgeted cost, BAC, and the actual AC dollars today, until today, the tracking day. So there are two formulas here. PCIB equals to EV divided by BAC. So in this example here, PCIB equals to EV is 160, BAC is 320. What is this is the total budgeted cost for the whole project is equal to 0 0.5. And PCIC is equals the formula is AC divided by EAC. So example, PCIC is 230. Just now that finishing point will be uh, 5 because it's already or when on the tracking day of the period 7, it's already behind schedule and over cost. So by the time you apply this EAC, so remember EAC is a re-estimated cost. So this cost can be EACE or EACF. EACE will be by expert. EACF will be using formula. So after this, you will see there's a formula. So this one is using 230 divided by, let's say the formula is 575 is equal to 0 0.4. That means you did not achieve. If you get one, if out $1, you get back $1, then your uh, variance will be zero. But if it is less, not up to one, that means you are behind time and over cost. Okay, so that's the interpretation. So this is the value here, interpretation of the indexes. So if this is a CPI, SPI, if you get a greater than one, it's good. So this is under cost, a head of schedule. If exactly equals to one, you are on cost, on schedule. So if you're less than one, over cost, behind schedule. So just now you got a 0 0.5, 0 0.4, they are all over cost and behind schedule. That's the meaning of CPI, SPI. Okay, so now after that, you plot the graph. Also, you plot the point here. You see SPI 0 0.8, CPI 0 0.7, that means not performing well. Uh, this graph only show the PCIB 0 0.5. Uh, the 0 0.4 is not shown here. Okay, so meaning that this one is, is over cost behind time. Okay, period. So these are the point, the value you plotted, you calculated, just plot on the graph only. So period 1 until 7, and you can see your status along this period 7, uh, both are no good. Okay, so that means you have to take some corrective actions now. Okay, now. Yeah, other than that, you need to know when you uh, allocate the percentage. Okay? 
additional earned value rules. That's why I mentioned to you that you have to estimate how many percent you complete then multiply by the plan value become your EV. So there are other rules to guide you how to assign the percentage. So the rules apply to short duration activities and or small cost activities. So some of you, you got very short, uh, you know, just one day or maybe a few hours you can finish that kind of rule. So you apply uh, how you allocate the percentage. It's just like, oh, I want to identify what are the possible platform or the survey platform I can do. So maybe one day only, very short. Uh, I want to identify which are the faculty and which are the department, the respondent I should decide. Uh, that one also very short, maybe within a uh, one day only. So this is called short duration activity. So how you allocate the percentage. So there are two rules you can apply. One is called zero hundred percent rule. So this assumes hundred percent of budget credit is earned at once and only when the work is completed. So the moment, so if you apply this zero hundred percent rule means, okay, today is I want to allocate, I want to uh, find out, okay, identify what are the faculty and department that I am going to conduct survey. So let's say if you are taking two days, okay. So the first day you are still working on, second day you are still finished. So the moment you started is zero, okay. Second day you finish hundred percent. So it's called zero hundred percent. The moment you finish, you just assign hundred percent. Other day don't assign, all zero. You understand? So it's called zero hundred percent rule. So the second is called fifty fifty rule. So this allows for fifty percent of the value of the work package budget to be earned when it is started, and fifty percent to be earned when the package is completed. So this rule is called fifty fifty. So the moment you started, 50%. The next, when you finish, 50%. You understand? So like, uh, just now, an uh, example is two days. So the moment you started, is 50% allocated already. Not yet finished, but so it will give 50%. Second one, the second day you finish, give another 50%. Yeah. So this is called 50-50% rule. Or you want to apply 0-100%. I started, I give 0%. So second day I finish everything, I so it will give 100%. So up to you. You want, for this kind of short duration activity, you can apply 0-100% rule or 50-50% Instead, just now that you know percent complete, you get oh, uh, I I this one is two day huh? How many percent uh, First day, how many percent I should allocate? So you have to think. So in order to uh, bother you about this, you apply one of these rules, make your job easier because it's a short duration one. Okay. So next, additional earn value rules. Okay, continue. So the rules apply to long duration activities that can be broken into short, discrete work packages of no more than one or two report periods. So the percent complete with weighted monitoring gates. So you, you have to check. So this one is allocated. See how many percent you should complete. So this uses subjective estimated percent complete in combination with hard tangible monitoring points. So at certain point, you have to estimate. So look at this example here. So assume a long duration activity with a total budget of, let's say, uh, Ringgit Malaysia uh, 500 or if, if 500,000 or something like that. So the activity is cut. Okay, let's say it's 500. Make it simplified. So understand the activity is cut into three consequentially discrete okay discrete packages with monitoring gates so each point okay you you do the checking representing the first okay first part is 30 percent second part is 50 percent and the third part is 100 percent of the total budget so the earn amount at each monitoring gate cannot exceed okay so you cannot exceed so you multiply this so you have three consecutive you multiply by the value 50%, the first one is uh, 30, 50, and 100%. So 30% multiplied by 500 is RM150. That means the first period is 30% completed. You allocated this percentage will be RM150. The second one will be 50%, then it's 250. And third one will be uh, 500, 100% of it. So this, this kind of monitoring point serve as a check on overly optimistic estimates. So note, this rule is frequently used to authorize progress payment uh, for that kind of contractor, you subcontract as it support careful tracking and control of payment so that it discourages payment to contractor for work not yet completed. You finish, I only give you the money. If not yet finished, I'm not going to give you the total amount. So I give you a bit, a bit until you break down into the uh, discrete work packages and uh, different period. Then I allocate work completed. This is the percent finish. I give you this amount so that you can control. Then if you give one lump sum, you know, there are some cases that you will, let's say, uh, you know, uh, people, there are, you know, there are incidents that happen. You can hear from the news. Sometimes people say they renovate the house. They give the contractor the full amount. You know, the contractor just run away with the full amount and then the work not done. You see now. So if you want to, uh, you know, monitor this contractor, you cannot trust. So you give them, you have, after you finish certain work, I give you this amount. After finish another certain set of percentage of work done, I give you the other amount. So then you will monitor this. You won't have uh, the person cheating you. You understand? So this is how you do it. 
So next, remember, come to ECE, ECF, the forecasting, the final project cost. So the methods used to revise estimates of future project costs. So there are two approaches just now I already mentioned, EACE, EACF. So EACE means you allow experts, the person is very experienced in forecasting what is the new finishing point and the cost. So these experts in this field to change the original baseline duration and the cost because new information tells them the original estimate are not accurate. So at the tracking point, you know you're behind time, you're over cost. Now you ask the expert to do a forecasting for you. By the time at the finishing point of this project, I will be over cost by how much? I will be over the schedule by how many units of time, okay? Then this is using expert. Expert just give you the value. So next, EACF. So EACF is using formula. This uses actual cost to date plus an efficiency index to the project final cost in the last projects where the original budget is unreliable. So you know at the tracking point, you are both negative, negative. Now you do forecasting but using formulas. So what is the formula? So this is the formula for EACF. The equation for this forecasting model is called ETC. ETC is called estimated cost to complete your estimate. What will be the finishing cost? Okay. So EATC will be your remaining work. You see, today is your tracking. What will be the remaining more? What are the remaining work you need to be carried out? It's called the work remaining. Be wiped by CPI. Remember, CPI is your cumulative cost index today. So you remember just already given the formula. What is the formula? EV divided by AC, right? Equals to, this is the formula, right? So this work remaining will be, BAC is the estimated total project cost minus your EV now. Okay, divide by EV, divide by AC. So you get ETC, estimated cost to complete. Okay, so now EACF will equal to, this is the remaining cost you need to spend to finish the task, EA, ETC plus what is your current actual cost until today. Okay, so this is cumulative actual cost of work completed until today. Right? So that's why this is the remaining cost going to incur plus the total cost until today. So it will be your EACF, your forecasted new estimated total cost and completion, right? So this is using the formula. It makes sense, right? Okay. So now come back to this example. So just now remember the total baseline budget BAC is equal to 320,000. Your cumulative earned value EV until the tracking day is 160,000. Cumulative actual call AC until today is 230,000. So just apply the formula. So you go into ETC equals to work remaining. This is BAC minus EV over EV minus AC. And this EACF, ETC plus AC. Just apply. So this BAC, remember, is 320 here. Minus EV, EV is equal to 160. Divide by EV is 160 over AC is 230. And then you plus, this is the ETC is this part here. Plus AC, AC is equal to, uh, AC is 230 plus 230. So you plus this and you can see now you end up with four five nine four five nine thousand dollars So what was your original plan? It's supposed to be ending with 320. Now you need 450 in order to finish this project now. So that means because at the tracking point of period 7, you are over time, you are uh, you, you are over, over time and also over cost, both negative, negative. So at the finishing point, you realize that you will be definitely over cost and over time. Uh, over time, but over cost by four four five nine thousand compared with original of three two zero thousand now. Okay, so this is forecasting. Yeah, there's another index. It's called to complete performance index TCPI. So this is a supplement to the estimate at complete. It's supplement to EACF computation. So formula for TCPI is equal to BAC minus EV divided by BAC minus AC. So what is this TCPI means? This TCPI measures the amount of value each remaining dollar in the budget must earn to stay within the budget. So in this example here, ending at period 7, you go and calculate TCPI. is equal to BAC is 320, EV is minus 60, 160, BAC is 320, minus AC is 230. So you have 160 divided by 90 equals to 1.78. So what is the meaning? This means each remaining dollar in the budget, you must earn back $1.78 for each dollar that you spend in order to stay within the 320,000. So this TCPI means I don't want to exceed. My original plan ending cost will be 320,000. 
Now at the tracking point of ending period seven, I am over cost. I'm an over schedule. I know I need to catch up. Okay. So in this case, if I want to stay, still I don't want to exceed it because just now you see it's already calculated. The, by the finishing point, you are going to be four five nine thousand. I do want. I still want to stay back at three two zero thousand. Okay. I still want to my cost within three two zero. I don't want to by the finishing point is exceeding until four five nine. So how to do that? That means from this until this remaining period, I uh, ending now is period seven, until the ending period of the eleven period, I still want to stay back with my original plan. Then that means what I need to do now is every one dollar I spend, I must get back the value I earn must be one dollar and seventy eight cents in order to stay within the total cost of three two zero thousand, not exceeding my original plan total cost. So that's the meaning of. PCPI. Okay, understand now? So that means one dollar I spend, I have to work very hard to get back the value is worth more than one dollar, which in this case is one point seven eight dollar worth value. So that I stay within three two zero thousand dollar of cost that I plan at the finishing point. Okay now? So that's the meaning, uh, okay. PCPI. So this is an example. This is a monthly status report. Uh, in terms of you see PB, EB, AC, and so on. Then you have a summary, and then the man management level, when you look at the report, they will know oh, what is this a project is performing? Is it ahead time behind? I see the moment you see SVO negative behind time, CV negative over cost, and then they will ask what kind of corrective you're going to do. You see, so you then you do a projection. You see, when you by the time finishing, you'll be negative. See or not? So, uh, you know, in Microsoft, they have all kind of reporting every week, uh, according to uh, whatever uh, I know about. This Microsoft and this Bill Gates in charge. Every week he look at this uh, progress, the earn value, you know, all this value, and then he will take action immediately before it's too late. Okay. So next, uh, this is another example: the Trojan nuclear plant uh, decommissioning earn value status report. This is a uh, it's just showing the different format of a uh, earn value reporting. Okay. okay. Next, other control issues, issues in maintaining control of projects. Okay, you take note. About this earn value analysis. Remember, there's a term called scope creep. Scope creep means your requirements slowly, very silently, and a bit, a bit at a time. So, in the end, will be definitely going to jeopardize your project completion. So, if they say the customer asks you, uh, at first I say I want hundred to be set. Then I say, okay, how about you add a bit more? Uh? Can you add another ten more set? Now, uh, hundred to be set. Is it a little bit? Then sometime later, can you add another ten more set? Is it Slowly, I add a little bit, little bit to your requirements. So without you realizing it, then you study realize that, uh, it is, you know, it is getting a lot of things. Your requirement getting a lot larger and larger now. So you realize that this is called scope creep. Very silently, your requirements getting a lot. It will end up you're going to be behind time, and over. You understand? So next, this is the issue you have to take up. So you must try to avoid this from happening. By stating to the, you will have a sign with the customer that this is it, 120, 120. You cannot add more. That's it. That's the point. You cannot have any uh, additional request. So if you want to uh, uh, give me any additional request, provided you agree to extend the timeline, you agree to uh, pay me the extra money for doing these additional requirements. Okay. So you have to state it in the contract. Okay? So second one is about the baseline changes. So once you are tracking point, you realize you are behind time, your over cost. You need to make some changes. Try to catch up. Any changes, remember, you make, you have to go through the change control management. Remember in the risk management, any changes you make, you cannot simply change. You have to uh, inform the management and then the customer as well what changes you make because it's involved, okay? Because it's their project and there's a cost incurred. The management has to decide whether I agree to pay you more or cut the cost and so on. I want to kill the project also can. So when you have any baseline changes, be sure you follow the change control management system. And then you must uh, take note that every changes you must communicate to all the parties concerned. You cannot make the change without telling the parties concerned. So it's just like, remember the test one, Dr. Hyro never update me about the change in the question original. He said, oh, I'm going to set, let's say, 50 50 question, 50 question of uh, MCQ. Then suddenly he changed to something else and he never, this is his baseline. He never update me until I go and uh, find out from him. Can I have a look? Then I found that, hey, how come your your, you know, your original structure, you see, it's like that. Now it becomes something else. 
So you need to update. You need a communication plan. Okay, inform all the parties after. Otherwise, say, how come you never update me? You cannot simply change. So let's say my requirement is I want to have a uh, ten functionality, and then you change one functionality to something else. Customer will be very angry. Okay? So next, the data acquisition costs and problems. So when you are doing earn value analysis, you need to collect data. For example, how much is the actual cost incurred for each of the activities and how many percent completed. These are data that you need to capture. So you need people to capture, and the person go and capture takes time. Time is money. So data acquisition will cost you extra time and cost. And also remember percent complete. This task how many percent completed until this period of time. So the estimation of percent complete is also very subjective. So if you ask A to com to do the estimation of percent complete, he may say, oh, this task until today this period is ten percent. Another person may say, oh. I don't think so. This is five percent. Another person may say this is twenty percent. So it's very subjective. So that's why you need some kind of guidelines. Remember, the short duration, zero hundred percent guideline or fifty fifty percent guideline. And others period, other a uh, longer period of time, then you have to allocate the percentage accordingly. So these are some issues that you should take note. Okay. So ah, uh, this one is a scope change. So if there's any scope changes, change changes to the baseline, there are two possibilities. So this is your original baseline. So this is what you uh, estimated on this tracking day. Today is the tracking day, but something happened, and now you want to change the baseline. So the baseline can have a uh, two types of consequences. It can end up this is a new baseline A, and there's an increase is the cost. So after you change something, increasing the total cost to the project. So another change to the baseline plan, your original plan, it can be a change that help you to cut down cost. So this become your new baseline B cost, but it's decreasing. So a change can help you to can uh end up with more cost incurred, or it can cut down the cost. There are two possibilities depending on what kind of change you make. If something that is bring something good, it will cut down cost. If the change is bringing something that is uh, uh jeopardize your project progress, it will add more cost. So increase the project cost. Okay. So this is an example. Just now I mentioned, if any changes happen, you need to communicate. So you need to have a communication uh, plan, uh, in your project. This is a conference center Wi-Fi project communication plan. That means what kind of information that you are going to disseminate. So this is a milestone report when you are supposed to disseminate by Monday. Okay. So every month times. Then what is the most essential email or during meeting document and so on. Responsible who is in charge? Who department in charge? Project office. Then recipient who receive this report. Okay. So this is called communication plan. So that means you always update. Remember earlier, there's one lecture also mentioned about you know there's a the four quadrant that the different type of people you need to update them. Okay, I think in the test one also asked one question about this. Okay, uh, the the question three I think set by Doctor Hiro. That means you must communicate. If there are changes going on. Uh, something happened behind time. You want to do some catching up or whatever changes made to the resource or to the cost. Or the timeline, you have to update the different party to keep them informed regularly. Is this party should be weekly report? That party should be monthly. That party should be bi monthly and so on. So this is called a communication plan. So identify what are the information you have to disseminate, when to send out, in what mode, who is responsible for sending out, who is supposed to receive the report. So these are all known as communication plan. So every project must have this. Ah, huh? okay. Okay, so these are the key points, uh, key terms for this uh today's lecture here. Any questions? You know how to do a uh, earn value now? Yes. Any question? May I ask something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about the project baseline, right? Uh, because my team mm. last time doing the network analysis, we are just doing uh using the word package. That's why we have some things like uh. Only some tasks with one days only, so I believe that yeah, if okay. I do so in the project baseline here, it would be very difficult for me to do so. Uh, so so that's why your 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 PV ah uh, the plan value. So how how are you going to put your period period by period? So one period, because one of it is one day, right? So the yeah. others will what be the longest one? Uh, the longest one is going to be fourteen days, but I got plenty of like just one day, some with three days, some with five days, some things like that. I believe that if I just uh using that, it would be very difficult for me to draw the project baseline. 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, can I see? Can I know what is the total total duration in terms of days? Uh, total how many days is eighty seven days? Ah, so if you plot according to days, then will be have eighty seven columns, right? So it will yes. be very tedious. It's going to be impossible, actually. Yeah. So now, uh, you can do it in terms of a uh, weeks. Okay, you connect to weeks. Uh, or you can set, remember just like I mentioned, one period can be set up to the day that you want. So for example, one period is, let's say, is five days. One period is 10 days. You understand? Then if you, yep. let's say, it's uh -huh. within one day. If when within one day, so let, let's say your, your period is, let's say, is uh, five days. You understand? One period one period is considered is five days for, for your, this mm -hmm. PV. Yeah? Your one period is five days. Mm -hmm. So your one is only one day. So you draw the one period is, uh, the length is of, uh, you estimate roughly is five portion of this. And you just draw only one, a bit, one, a bit part, very, uh, one fifth of it. You understand? Oh, so, oh yeah, I just want to make sure that this kind of thing is applicable. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, uh, you just manipulate, uh, your period is, uh, five, five working day for one period. Or you can set yeah. it, my period is 10 working days. That will be one tenth of it. That means oh. a very small bar to draw. This is one day out of the 10 days. Okay. Uh, and doctor, if I do so right, if I have some of the tasks, it's just like uh, three working days, but the uh. Uh, cost estimation for the three days have slightly different. For example, the first day is like 10 ringgit, second day 10 ringgit, but the third day is like 50 ringgit, some things like that. Uh, how will mm. I be doing for the earn value analysis? Because what I showed just now is the working period. They are just analysis using working period. Yeah, yeah. So, so a bit difficult, uh, okay? Yeah, <laughs> okay. it's, it's going so to in, in be case, possible. So I'm quite curious how should I do yeah. that. Yeah, if you want to be precise, then you have to give me all the 87 days. <laughs> you see, if you uh, so want to be it, just uh, one period, if, if let's say within one period is uh one period is uh ten days, then it's it's within half of the period. You, you that means every period is a total already. So I just give the total. I no need to like specifically uh, yeah. use out each of the days, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. But, but of course, <laughs> you, you can draw the length is. You, you can draw the length is partially. Let, let's say one period is five five days, but one of it is three days, right? So yeah. you, you cannot plot the uh, first day, second day, third day, the allocation of the cost now. So you sum up everything, just draw the bar, and then for the three days, uh, and then you treat it for the whole period. Uh. Okay. Then of, of course, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, plan value, it, it will not be so accurate because it's not the exact duration for the cost that incurred, you see, or not? Yeah, but uh, since last time I do it with the days, I, I have no choice to do it inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Unless right you, you think you want to, if you want to really work on this, but actually it's also not difficult because as you say, your duration is very short. It's only one day and then three days. So you apply the 0-100% rule or the 50-50% rule, you understand? Then it's also quite easy for you to allocate the percentage of uh, the earned value. Mm. But you have to plot quite long uh, because your total is 87. So you have to 87 days long. Okay. Yeah, it will going to be, take a lot of page actually. Yeah, yeah. So so you 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 draw it in the you have to be smart uh, how you draw it. Uh, okay. <laughs> how so, uh, how you, you draw it. Okay, I will try to discuss with my teammates and come up with the plots. Come up with the best way of how to do this plan value and the earn value analysis approach. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to make it. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. Any other question related to your project? You know how to do the earn value analysis? Yes. Okay, if no, no, no question, uh, I, I want to ask the uh, tutorial group, uh, tutorial group three, uh, uh team six. Uh, you send me the PowerPoint. Can you please show your PowerPoint slide? Uh, I only have minor comments. I just have a look already. Uh, can and, wait and, a minute. And, yeah, another there are other team members. Uh, also the the come back to the question of uh, Zachary Iskandar sent to about. Yeah, you 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 can show now. Let let me okay. You you can share now your one. So also I'll come back to help the Zachary Iskandar. Your problem uh is it solved now or still waiting for my intervention? Um, doctor, can you see my screen? No, not yet. Okay. No, it's black. Nothing showed yet. Oh, yeah, I change. Ah. Uh. 
The slide design is good. Only a few very minor comments. And also others ask me question about the risk management. So I will answer your question. I uh, try to answer by maybe Thursday because I'm quite occupied now. Okay, your okay. Uh, other team, other team members and leaders, please take a look. Uh, I like this design. Very good, well designed. Okay, only a few comments. Uh, can you scroll side by side? I only a few comments for you. Some changes. Uh, this kind of design, I definitely I will give you full marks Ooh. for your slide. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just a uh, yeah. Uh, only only a few very minor comments from me. Uh, some minor mistakes. You scroll one by one, and I tell you where to stop. Then you stop. Okay. And you scroll now. Uh, I I already scrolling. <laughs> Maybe... mind, uh, these these are all okay. So so the others please take a look. They you know this team they make full use of the space. You see they make it very large. You see, you, you can see, you can read clearly, and they are in the point form. Only the keywords, okay? And the presenter just need to construct the sentence, then you'll be presenting. If you put sentences, the presenter will start to read. It become reading and not presenting. You understand? Okay, I'll go on. So, you can, you can, this is good. Okay, uh, this is good. Okay, next, continue. There are only a few minor uh, correct, uh, corrections that you need to make. Okay, go on. Next. Uh, this is good, yeah. You see, so this is explain the questions, okay? Uh, next, I think there's one you mentioned about. Um, I think it's a uh process breakdown structure. I think, okay. Uh, this one, this one, I have no comments on this. Okay. Uh, how you explain the hot uh, question and the answers? I have no comments on this. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to ask uh, all, all the students in my class here, have you all answered these uh, HOTS assessment questions? Uh, yes, can I have an answer from, from, from uh, you stop here, you stop here. Can, can yes. I have an answer from all the students in my, my this uh, TG2 until TG5? Uh, have you all answered this HOTS question? Yes, doctor. Anyone? Yes. Can? yes. Yeah, all answered right? Oh, answer. Yeah, no. so first, first, they are showing the, the, the question and the answer. So if you have not answered, then it becomes biased. You understand or not? So that means you already see the question and then you may take the answer from their, their presentation here. And you know what they explain, then you just follow. Maybe that originally it was not what you are going to answer. That's why I need to know, uh, have all the students from my class, uh, these 202 here, all participated in the HOTS assessment. So. Please, all the team leaders, just check on this. Ask all your team members, go and answer the question now. Before this, uh, no, no doubt your, your team is presenting, but you're showing now the slide. So they may be able to see what is the answer for some of the question. Okay. Uh, I want to comment on this slide, the, the PBS. I think you don't have a number here, right? I didn't see any numbers, the each level. Oh. There's no number, right? Yeah, I think we miss out it. <laughs> Later we add uh, it on. Okay, so this one is... Yeah, so uh, level one, level two, and so on. So okay. one way you can see other teams are very creative because sometimes you 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 this kind of dragging down, dropping down of the boxes, you cannot tell uh, which level or, already. So maybe you draw the way that you cannot show. So they use color. So you the color to represent which level is it. You can use that approach. Okay, next. Okay. That's one. I think is uh, I think it's renewable. You would put the word closure. You should put the word project closure. Um, you check on, on on the slide. You put the word. I think it's durable. The different okay. faces for I, I think you mentioned the faces, and then one of it you put closure. You should put the word project closure. Okay, just add the word yeah. project closure. Um, and one I think is is a mistake. Oh, this how, one. Uh, I, yeah. Ah yes. Ah, this one you add project closure. Yes. Okay. okay, back to the one just now. This is the uh, responsibility yeah. matrix. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, come back to just now the faculty. Oh, faculty. Yeah. <laughs> the faculty uh, you are in charge of faculty of engineering and uh, FSKTM, right? Yeah. So you look at that slide. So I, I mentioned that uh, you can use the building of that faculty to represent this is the faculty you are going to collect the data from. Okay, now you look at FSKTM. Uh, 
you don't need to put um because it is already mentioned that uh the respondent will be all from um so you can remove the word um just uh, uh instead of engineering faculty it should be faculty of engineering okay yeah instead of computer science and information technology faculty it should be faculty of computer science and information technology so the actually our faculty the name the and is we don't spell and i think it's an ampersand sign oh okay you know the, yes okay i have another comment is uh you know our faculty if you look at our faculty you got three images there on the right hand mm. side that is the latest uh, image that's the current look of our faculty and your left hand side you got two uh, buildings is our former look this one oh. is the early stage of our faculty you can see uh, you got no trees nothing there mm. you see or not the road they are not paved no <laughs> tar you see so that was the first the building was first uh, they built the building and we just shifted in that was the original look at the early stage of that building so you can see it's very empty the surrounding you see you know like we are in the jungle like that <laughs> 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 so you should remove that so these two look of the building because that is the early stage of they just completed so it was nothing there so you should only display the current look then people say, hey, how come this picture, which one is the current look of the faculty? It should be the purple one, you understand? So remove the, the early stage of the building because it, it doesn't look nice at all, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Doctor. Understand? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the one I want to comment. Uh, let's just scroll down a bit. Uh, any more? Uh, uh, it's only very few minor comments from me. So other teams, uh, please take a look and then you try to, you see, you learn the approach is you make full use of the space you have. You put the picture which are relevant and then it's meaningful. And the text font size is very big. Uh, you can see, you see, they put all their members, their pictures, and then they make full use of the slide, the space you have. And you put the relevant icons and not something that is not relevant. Okay, uh, so this is good. So I have no other comments. Uh, remember the ampersand sign, AND, faculty of computer science, is the ampersand if you take note of this. Uh, okay, scroll down. Okay, uh, next. Next, uh, this one, same thing, the micro approach, you got the, the level on I'm not sure, I cannot remember. So you got the different level of that, then you just put the, the uh, numbering. The okay. Yeah. Can. yeah. The, the different level numbers, okay? If, if, if related, okay? Uh, next. 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 Um, okay, this one, this one, okay. Yeah, okay. This one, no problem. Uh, I, I, I got one, one, one problem, yeah. Go, go back to some of that one. Uh. The Which WP. one? The WP. WP. Yes. Okay. The WP, I noticed uh, the cost estimation. The, with the figures one. Uh, this one? No, 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 no. This one is network. Oh, maybe a, a little bit lagging. Not this one. Okay, you, you, you see, you take a note. Uh, your WP duration up there, you put is work days. But down here, you, you take note, your work your uh, work period is bracket hours. Uh, um, it is because this six is for hours and then one, two, three, four, five, six is for days. Huh? No, no I, I don't understand. No, because you're up there, WP duration, you put there that this means it's a work days. So I will interpret this one, two, three, four, five, six means work days. Why become now work hours? Um, it is because the six assigned here is means six hours. The one, two, three, four, five, six is hours, not, not day. Ah. Um, the one, two, three, four, five, six is days. Okay. But then the, the, the figure here is represents hours. Oh, uh, no need, no need, no need, no need. Oh, okay. No need. No need. So I just change it into days. Yeah. Ah. yeah, yeah. That become very confusing. Okay. It become very confusing. I, I don't know what is the meaning. So no no actually the the each column means what is the the timeline the time the duration that's why it's time phase you see this period this period you allocated this period that means this is cost estimation so so it is it's not about the the duration you know so it's wrong so that means let's say the first one you say you say is the day right so mm. that's why it's put back work period is back at day so that means one two three four five six means it's a day but inside cannot put the hours. So the cost estimation, the total, the, the rate is 10. Like first one, cost estimation is 10 uh, ringgit, 10 ringgit per hour. Okay, fine. Doesn't matter. But that is within the first work week. Then is how much amount. So that's why this amount will be in your plan value. 
So means that I write 60 here. Yeah, 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 okay. that's right. It's not 6, that's why. Right. Uh. Oh, understood. <laughs> Uh, okay. so, so it's wrong already. That's why I said, I was wondering how come up there you put work day, then suddenly you say it's hour. So that one should be still the same. Work period bracket is days. So the one, two, three, four, five, six means the day. Day one, day two, day three, no, day six. So mm. the day one I spend uh, 10 is uh, 10, 10 ringgit per hour. So total is six hours. Then you should put 60 instead of six. Okay. Understood. Uh, so because you see if you 240 I will be very confused you 6 times 4 is 24 where got 240 <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, mm, got it uh, so that's why I ask all of you have, must do this WP so that this become your plan value your PV now so this is period by period you see but of course you can you can take the total I, one period can be my 6 days it can be like that your period is 6 days instead of one day one day like that okay now mm. Mm, okay uh, I think I think that's all. No other comments now. So I think it's good. So this type of design will get full marks for your slide design. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> other comments. Okay, uh, uh the question asking uh some of you that leaders sent to me about risk management. I will answer your question later because I'm quite fully occupied now. I, I try to answer you by because it's not really that urgent. So I just look at the PowerPoint because you need it on this Friday. Right. So okay. uh, uh risk which management one I'll try to answer by uh, this Friday or this weekend. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Zachary Iskanda. Are you here? You sent me the email ask, telling me that you got problem with the uh, hot assessment, right? You got only mm -hmm. two. Until today, do you know what's the number you have? Uh, uh, the last time I checked was yesterday was six uh, responses. So oh, I haven't okay. checked for today yet. Okay. Uh, so uh, you are supposed to achieve one, two, zero, right? Yes. So you're quite worried cannot achieve. So uh, how many more days or how many weeks more you is your data collection phase? Uh, supposedly, if uh, without considering the lag, uh, we have uh, only this week. But if we, yeah, if we, if we include the lag, uh, we're supposed to have another uh, this week and uh, next week. So that means two more weeks. Lah. Okay. Yes. Two more weeks. Mm, but but it seems that it's not achievable, right? It's quite impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, what we are doing is that uh, I'm uh, I'm telling my members to uh, resend and uh, redistribute the links to the representatives, uh, our friends in the faculties and the departments. And I'm also looking into uh, getting the uh, metrics number, the 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 three. Uh, letters of the metric number of the old metric number so that mm -hmm. we can send uh, to uh, directly to the assist one meals so ah, we're okay. trying to see how, how how that works yeah 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 good so so you see you are doing some corrective action so mm -hmm. you you are you're monitoring and you realize something has gone wrong so you better do something now before it's too late so you have uh, taken one uh, corrective action uh, two ways uh, okay so now uh, i got another one suggestion is how to help you to solve this problem so that's why I'm asking the tutorial group too. Uh, Jin Xiang is here. Uh, yeah. So you told me your your group completed right, 120 sets. Uh, exactly. The day, uh, the day I got something mistake uh, because I total have 120, but two from FS Cadian, so I got 118 only. So mm -hmm. I need two more. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So you are supposed to collect data from which faculty and department? Uh. Faculty of Science and uh, Faculty of Business and Accountancy. Okay, you you achieve this 120 is before the timeline or after the timeline that your plan value, your plan schedule? Uh, I think it be before. Okay, so so you, you can see that means you have done, yeah, yeah, that means you have uh, done something right that you can achieve ahead of time, right? Mm. So. What have you done? So maybe probably you got a good friends, you know, from all these uh, faculties and department that they help you, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. So now come back to Zachary Iskanda. So your one, you are supposed to collect from what? Engineering? Ah? We are supposed to collect on uh, faculty engineering, department of biomedical uh, engineering. Oh, and engineering. Then we're yeah, biomedical, and then we are supposed to collect uh, from uh, API, APM, uh -huh. uh, Culture uh -huh. Center, and uh, Department of Urban and Regional Planning. 
Okay. Uh, can I know any of the this uh, host assessment team are collecting data from engineering one? Any other team collect? Huh? My group is collecting responses from civil engineering. Oh, only civil engineering. Okay. Other uh. than that, no. Uh. Okay. Uh. Any other team collecting from engineering faculty? Only, only your team. Because I'm not, not checking the file. Okay. Anyone just update me? If no, now come back. Uh, Zachary Iskandar. So you can ask. You ask help from Jin Xiang. So Jin Xiang got a lot of good friends. Uh, they are not from the, you, you are supposed to collect from engineering, right? But you are, they are from faculty of science, right? So anyone hot assessment is faculty of science? No, nobody? None of the team doing hot assessment collecting data from uh, faculty of science? Okay, so Zachary Iskanda, another option because Jin Xiang has good friends from faculty of science, you know, that they collected some uh, this data from other faculties, which is not uh, in your list. So you can, after checking with other host assessment team, they are not collecting data from those team that Jin Xiang collected data for his CTES. You can go to those teams. Okay, uh, those, those are respondents that Jin Xiang uh, really asked the friends to respond. So Jin Xiang will try to help you by giving the faculty of science those responses. And then you ask your friend again to help out to answer this hot assessment for uh, Zachary Iskandar. And then now you change, you see, you make a change now. Originally, you are going to collect from a faculty of engineering. Now you make a change to go to faculty of science. You understand? So you need to go through the change management. So of course, you still can, can uh, remain uh, all your faculty of engineering respondents. You are just expanding your scope. That means I try to get more respondents from other faculties rather than just within the faculties that I already defined. You understand now? So that means you try to get more by having a respondent from other faculty not in your original list. Okay, can Jin Chang help out in this case? Give the, uh, uh, you know, you, you send an email to your friend asking those friends who already responded to you and then you inform him that uh, my another uh, course mate doing an on host assessment would like to ask a, a system from you to help to answer their uh, host assessment form. So could you please help out and then ask uh, Zachary Iskandar after that you contact, you give the contact and also you CC email and then Zachary uh, Iskandar do the follow up. Is that okay? So th that's mean because I didn't use email for to, to split my form, I just use a uh, normal WhatsApp message. Uh, it's okay, then you talk to your friend first. You ask the, the contact email from your friend and then ask mm -hmm. your friend to write the list of email to them because this one they need the email they want to send out personally invitation okay 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 uh, can, can, uh, can. yeah you ask your friend to list down all their uh, their friends 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 okay list down all their names and then the email addresses then you pass to Zachary Iskanda and you tell him that my, my course mate is so and so and then his name is this and then he will just uh, follow up and contact you and then send you the all the invitation uh, messages and then from there you participate in the host assessment. Ah, then Zachary Ikanda, you'll be quite safe because you just ask help uh, from your course mate's friend, okay? And if they are very cooperative, then they help you. Then you should be able to achieve quite a lot of uh, respondents within this week. Is that okay? Uh, so, but you have to follow the change management process, ah. So you know how to draw. You see that part, your risk management. You've got the flow for the change management process now. Okay now? Uh, uh, total. Yeah. Uh, so so I need to ask my friend about to join Jackly uh survey. Ah. Uh, then he, then he, then he, is my friend okay? Then I pass my friend details to Jackly. It's me and that. Uh if, if you want to ask his permission first, of course you can. You just tell him that uh because they, they had uh you know it's uh very poor respondents hope that they can help out in this and then you tell, tell him that uh, it is something also good for them so that they know their uh their higher order thinking skills okay okay uh, okay so it, it's good to get his permission first uh, uh, that, that's nice that's a nice way to do uh. okay 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 so uh exactly is that okay now yes yes uh level five okay uh. So any more, any, anyone else got uh, got some issues or problems that you need my help to intervene and come in and uh, help you to solve your problem? Yes or no? Any more? Then I'll help you now. 
Other question, I'll try to answer by Thursday or Friday. Yeah, uh, doctor, I want to ask some things about the survey. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm from Tishibo. Uh, I want to ask that since I targeted some of the uh, measure, right, I did reach some of the measure to get the numbers of 30, but some didn't get to the number of 30. So should I include them inside my uh, survey analysis then? Uh, if you if you if let's say particular department is not 30, but from that faculty is 30, you can analyze in terms of the faculty instead of department. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so if the department or uh, if I say that, for example, uh, I'm getting from a uh, faculty of science, mm. I'm targeting uh, biology and chemistry. Both of them reach the amount of 30, then I can use the uh, group them together, right? Yes, you you oh. analyze in terms of faculty of science instead of they say uh, uh biology and chemistry. Okay, thank you. But you can you can list their profile. You can do the uh you know the pro the listing analysis of listing by in terms of uh, chemistry. There are how many respondent in terms of biology? How many? But total from these two will be more than thirty. Uh, so I can group them together as the same department, but in the analysis, okay. then I can still okay, same, same faculty. Oh, same faculty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. But, but okay. you you can analyze in terms of uh you know the respondent how many come from the which, which department you can draw a bar or pie chart on that. that there's no harm in doing that, and also how many meals and free meal from each of this uh, department. Yeah. Uh, after I cleaning the data, right? Ah. Uh. Yes, okay. yes. After cleaning the data, yes, yes. Uh, so another mm -hmm. another issue I always mention is don't do the coding first, uh, because I want all team using the same coding, uh, in, in your SPSS. The C test, all the team will be using the same uh SPSS coding. Same for this game. Same for the uh, uh the house assessment is using the the Vivian's one is okay. So, so later also we will do a standardized uh coding also, and also for the COVID nineteen. Okay, so after uh, once your data collection phase over, we will sit down and discuss what will be coding for each uh, game, uh, for the game, for the C test, for every group. Okay, so okay. Me meaning we'll start the coding I first until uh, one team can start, but we will discuss and standardize everything, and then all the we will pass the coding to all teams to use. Yes, okay, doctor, may I ask? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my team, my team already got uh reach uh our plan time for distribute the survey, which is for about uh, one month. So uh, but we already only got one hundred and two respondents. So should we stop or we extend the time? Hmm. You see. Ah. Uh, so that means you are uh in terms of scope, you are not achieving the target, and your timeline uh, yeah. is up. Ah. Uh, so now that's why this is your project progress tracking now. So that mm -hmm. means probably you are. Uh, in this case, scope not achieved. So if you extend, then that means you'll be over time. Yeah. So you can do over time, but this one is a uh -huh. change now. Extending the time for this data collection phase, then mm -hmm. you must go through the change management process. Okay. So you, you can add, because you only, you're quite reaching the target is 102 and 120. So I think uh -huh. within one week, I think one week you should be able to achieve, right? Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, you, you so you still extend. Uh, Another question is, uh, we uh, have uh, a few department from APM. It's like uh, three major department uh, have um, like more than more. It's like we have five uh, department from APM, but they are not reaching 30, 30 respondents. So can we just group them together? Like, just like we're young group in terms of faculty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you group together, you got more than 30, right? Uh, it, it's a more rich 30. Ah, okay, then then in this case, then uh, you try mm -hmm. to target this uh, which is not reaching 30 and you still need some more. Then you go go back to this uh, APM and then get uh, this uh, the five uh, departments to answer more so that you also at the same time try to achieve the 30. Also, uh, and so that later we will have like a uh, faculty from uh, FSKTM, but it's only focused on software engineering and then yeah. But are uh, we still focus uh, uh, when we analyze it, we will focus on uh, faculty or department or mix of them? Uh, if you, you can analyze in terms of faculty, in terms of department also can. It's up uh, to you to analyze one. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. okay. Thank you. Thanks to the Okay. Uh, okay. okay uh. Any more questions from any one of you?
uh, oh yeah, apa dia kena tak nak itu so dia suruh doktor. Uh, for the data that we need to wait for the coding, right? Ah uh, yes, yes. You uh, of so course you can. You, you if you know if you know SPSS, mm -hmm. you can do a coding. For example, I I mentioned that they let's say you use F mm -hmm. to stand for female. M for male, something like that. Mm -hmm. You can do the coding first, but one team do it, not all the teams doing it. And then later we want to come down and sit down and discuss, and then we standardize all, and then we send to all team follow this standard coding. Uh, okay, so since we extend our uh, survey, distributing survey time, so we will extend the, we will push the coding and the other parts ahead, right? Not necessarily. Your coding, you can uh, do in parallel now. Oh, oh, I see. Mm -mm. You, 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 every team you can draft your coding then later we will uh -huh. sit down and discuss we compare all the teams coding we have one standard set oh okay so uh what uh so in the coding we only put the raw data right like the number of the, uh, the, the, the id the is, no the, the yeah the coding means huh? okay m stand for male f stand for uh -huh. female ah uh, okay so so later in the sps i don't know whether you will learn sps so in uh, we the, already learn it so uh, you know right so in uh -huh. the SPS, there's also a label. Then in the label, you put M is M equals to, the meaning is M is male. And then F oh, it means okay. female. Then you spell out the label of it in full. So if you so know- So it doesn't need to analyze it first, right? Yeah. So you yeah. can create, you can uh, create a tentative uh, label and all the coding first. And then later, all the team leader, you maybe you can do it among all the team leaders. I got six teams, right? Six teams from the CT tutorial group too, right? Right. Okay, all the six team leader you discuss, you come up with your own coding, then you sit down, discuss. I use M, are you also using M? Ah, then you must standardize. Ah. Okay. Let's say there are question one, section A, or section B, like that. Okay, uh, are you question one or section A? Is uh, let's say S A S is for section A, S A underscore Q1 means section A question one. Uh, so I use that kind of coding. Are you using the same coding? So you, you do your own team coding first. Then after that, all the leaders from all the six team have a session discussion and then com uh, compromise on the coding standard one. Then after that, you, you send it to me. Let me have a look. Then I say, okay, this is fine. Then all of you use this. All right. Understand? So uh, okay. this same to other teams as well, the game one and also the COVID-19. Okay now? Okay. Ah, okay. Thank you, doctor. Okay, welcome. Okay, any more questions for any of the team members here? Or anyone or leaders? Okay, if, if you've got other questions, if uh, now you don't know what to ask, later you've got a question, you can send an email. I'll try to answer over the weekend or by this Friday uh, because I, I'm currently fully occupied with a lot of uh, online meetings and also I'm also sitting in the disciplinary board now, okay, for student cheating in the exam. So I'm, I'm quite occupied now, okay? So uh, any question, just send through email. I'll try to answer. If not, that will be after tutorial session or after lecture. Uh, actually, today is supposed to have tutorial four, right? So I think I want to postpone to this Friday. Is that okay? Uh, doctor, by the meanings like postpone to this Friday, I thought uh, this Friday is present, uh, presentation. Presentation, yeah. That doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So uh, after you all finish the presentation, then only we discuss. But I, I think all of you can join any of the session, right? You can join tutorial group, tutorial three, four, five, all the session, all of you can come in, right? Yeah, I guess so. But uh, based on your, how do I say, the tutorial booking, right? Some know, of the question is on TG2, some of the question is on TG3. That's why I'm curious about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, let's do it. Uh, let's say do it in the morning. That means after the second hour. Second hour means after TGC. 10 to 11. 10 to 11. So, because usually presentation is going to take a bit longer. So, let's say all of you just come in at around 11.15 like that. Uh, to tutorial group 3. You pick so, the tutorial group 3 session around 11.15 this Friday. We discuss tutorial 4 first. Uh, that means all of us need to go in around. Maybe we, we, we try to finish all because uh, four and three, I think, needed for your test too. Because after the following week will be your test already. It's 26 of December. After next week, next week it will be your test, right? Yeah. Next, next Saturday is your test. Oh, I, I need to cover that one. Okay. So we will see if, if, if uh, we try to finish tutorial four first, it's a shorter one. Then we will try to, if you can have, we can also finish tutorial three part two, but two, three part two is quite long. Uh, so maybe we'll see how it goes first. It, at least if we finish tutorial four first, 
then tutorial uh, three part two if you cannot finish we can maybe do half of it and then another half we do it on next wednesday after uh, my last lecture okay uh doctor there is someone asking that uh if we are having another class at the time uh oh, okay. this, friday, uh, this friday you are having a class at eleven fifteen. 15. Uh. yeah because some of them have class during the time she not me lah, the okay. friends okay then if if you have class and you are not the one who is going to answer tutorial question then you you don't have to attend uh. then later you get the answer from your friends uh. okay uh, okay uh, any more question Okay, no more. Okay, so we are discuss tutorial for uh, this uh, Friday at around 11.15. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh. Right, okay. So I'll stop here today because I got something to do now, okay. Uh. So I that's why I think I, I want to cancel the tutorial for discussion. Okay, now. So I see you on uh, this Friday. Those uh, preparing for your presentation, so get ready.